Herpes, a disaster, or has it just been completely blown out of proportion? In this video, I'm gonna talk about the stigma surrounding herpes and tell you why it's actually not as bad as it's made out to be. Stick around. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Lane from Adelaide, South Australia, coming to you with fun and factual health education. Now you might have seen some of my other videos about herpes where I talk about the signs and symptoms, treatments even. If you wanna check those out first, I'm putting a link up on the screen right now. But in this video, we're going a bit deeper. Why is there so much stigma surrounding herpes? And do you actually need to be worried if you have it at all? Well, let me start by asking you this. How common is herpes? How many people do you think carry the herpes simplex virus, also known as HSV? Would you believe it's almost two in three people worldwide? Around 65% of the population carry HSV. It's exceedingly common, and in most cases, people don't even know they have it. There are two subtypes, HSV1 and 2. HSV1 is the most common. This is the type that causes cold sores, but it absolutely can present on the genitals as well, particularly if you have oral sex. HSV2 is less common than one, but still carried by about one in eight people worldwide. HSV2 does tend to favor the genitals and anus. So you're less likely to see it on other parts of the body, but never say never. So if we think about the stigma, a lot of it comes back to HSV2. And sadly, that's because of the association with sex. HSV2 was not even discovered until the late 1960s, during the sexual revolution when sex was a pretty hot and controversial topic. So it's kind of no wonder that media campaigns were so targeted at people who were having sex outside of marriage. Genital herpes, sexual leprosy, Time Magazine called it, an epidemic targeting promiscuous, irresponsible people. And if that didn't scare you, Newsweek likened genital herpes to someone putting a soldering iron against your skin. Now, if we rewind the clock a little bit, you're probably wondering, did genital herpes even exist before the 60s? And the answer is yes, HSV has been infecting humans and other animals for as long as we know. But ironically, before HSV2 was discovered and the link to sexual contact identified, nobody really gave a crap about herpes. Everyone was more worried about smallpox, measles, mumps. So let's look at the facts. People who carry HSV1 or even HSV2 will often have no symptoms or very mild ones. Genital herpes will typically present with ulcers or blisters on the genitals or anus. Sometimes people also get swollen lumps in the groin which are quite sore and that's just the lymph nodes reacting. To be diagnosed you need to have a swab taken of one of the blisters or the sores. Blood tests are not helpful because they only tell us if you carry the virus, like 65% of the population do. They don't tell us if the sores you have are caused by the virus. But if you get a swab and it comes back positive, you can consider taking antivirals either then or in the future. Antivirals work in two ways, either by treating an outbreak or by suppressing the virus so that you can avoid outbreaks altogether. Now I cover a lot of this in some of my other videos, so I'll pop some links in the description below if you wanna check those out for more information. And then the $60 million question. Once you have HSV, do you have it forever? Technically, yes, but hear me out. Lots of viruses lay dormant in our system. HSV is one of them. HPV, responsible for warts, does too. Varicella, which causes chickenpox, is another. I had chickenpox when I was 14. Technically, it's still somewhere in my body. And one day, it may represent as shingles, which will suck. But until that time, I'm not walking around telling people I have chickenpox or varicella, because I don't. At least, not at the moment. Carrying HSV in your system does not mean that you will spread it to others, particularly if you don't have an outbreak. Carrying HSV does not mean you can't have sex. It does not mean you are irresponsible. It does not mean you're careless. So if someone tries to tell you otherwise, don't forget to point out, they probably have it too. And then tell them to piss off. Now, if this video has helped you, please consider sharing it because you never know who may be suffering in silence. Oh, and if there's some questions you want me to answer in other videos, I'm always looking for content ideas. Chuck me a message or post something in the comments below. Stay healthy, guys. I'll see you soon.